it was the new Gundam that stopped the Axis drop in 1988, and it was a variant of the new Gundam that successfully dropped Axis onto three mobile suits 31 years later. Oh, the irony. What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high-grade new Xeon Gundam from Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise. The Keeper of Order and the Teacher of Manners, it governs over GBM with the watchful eye of Captain Xeon, and brings justice to those who break the rules. A whopping 16 runners and a small sticker sheet make up the contents of this kit. Of course, quite a few runners are reused from the impressive High Grade Universal Century New Gundam, so despite the use of 9 new runners, the core build still feels similar to the originals, which definitely doesn't help the fact that it's based on the kit from 2008, while the new pieces are built around that very construction. Moreover, basically all the parts are very susceptible to awful nub marks, so caution must be exercised, especially with the antiquated engineering. You can really feel the age of the high grade new Gundam here, and with all the nubs and old gate placement, it is not a kit that I would recommend to beginners despite its awfully simple construction. It's also worth noting that thanks to the new chest unit, the new Xeon Gundam utilizes the universal backpack connections, so feel free to equip its backpack onto others and vice versa. Straight from the box, and despite the lack of high contrast shading, the high grade new Xeon Gundam looks decent. The design itself sports bold red and gold colors which looks comically stupid, and very eye-catching as a result. While the Xeonic elements fused into the new Gundam design doesn't work well on paper, but still manages to pull off something cohesive. Of course, because the new Xeon Gundam is an Ipe Gyobu design, the lineup proportions are more attuned to its styling, which the kit doesn't reflect well because of the reuse of parts. As a result, despite the spot-on colors, the intimidation factor isn't really there. However, the well-engineered nature of the original new Gundam remains present, as the part separation is great with stickers isolated to the eyes and head sensors, including the mono white and the empty channel behind it, as well as the red bit on the collar. There aren't many missing paint jobs to speak of apart from the recesses demanding black paint. I would also recommend applying black panel lining throughout to give it the harsh comical contrast, as well as repainting the gold pieces to look a little bit more appealing and cleaning out the seam line on the shoulder armor. But as it is, apart from how non gyobu it looks, the high grade new Xeon Gundam looks okay. Articulation begins with a hinged ball jointed neck with a restricted rotation. The shoulders can swivel along all axes, allowing for a good range of movement while the arms can rotate until they collide with the cape, and move up perpendicularly after shifting the shoulder flap. There's a bicep swivel, single jointed elbows, and ball jointed wrists. The waist can roll and rotate on its ball joint, front and side skirts can move, and it can kick decently towards the front and sides. The hips can swivel at the ball joint, there's a double jointed knee, opening thruster flap, and hinge ball jointed ankles, as well as some flip-flop action. Finally, the knives can swivel minutely, while the inner funnels can rotate, outer funnels are ball jointed, and all of the funnels possess a bend each to wrap around the Gundam like a blanket. Altogether, the articulation of the new Xeon Gundam is not the best, and it's a shame that they did not decide to update it like they did the Dragon Blast Master, despite using newly molded parts like around the hips. It's merely a serviceable range of articulation at best. For accessories, apart from the sole pair of holding hands, the kit also has the terrible funnels on the back, which can be sent out after detaching them from the body and stowing away the storage arms before plugging them into action bases with the hole in the bottom. They're made to be a cape first, funnel second, but I personally don't mind the odd looks. For handheld weapons, there are combat knives stored in the backpack, which are essentially just those from the blue frame second L. They can sandwich into the hands for use with no real issues, but the blade could use some chrome paint. On a related note, there's the massive Xeonic Sword, basically a modified version of the tactical arms, except the sticker use being restricted to the maroon bits on the tip and center pieces instead of being completely plastered with them. To use it, the forearm armor can be repositioned to stay out of the way of the manipulators before sandwiching the sword in. Of course, it is way too heavy for unassisted use, so a stand is included to prop up the sword for the tougher poses, or as a balancer for stabbing the sword onto the ground. 
but just like the tactic alarms, the sword tip can split and be positioned backwards, while the exhaust ports and handle can spin into position for the kit to use it in the high mega bowgun mode, which can be propped up by the provided display base, but this time with an added attachment to be plugged into the hardpoint of the sword. Alternatively, the sword tip can split and fold into itself, before plugging on an SP-11 beam to use the sword as the high mega saber, or to solo ult someone with an access drop like in Gundam Breaker Mobile, rest in peace. It does take up quite a lot of space, but at least the effect is way better than that of the Aegis Knight's big ass pitchfork. Finally, the Xeonic sword can be stored solidly on the backpack with the use of a sliding lock. As for leftovers, you get quite a few armor pieces, fin funnel joints, and bits of weapons from the original kit. Of course, you don't have enough to revert the kit back to its original form, but hey, at least you have some beam sabers left over. The High Grade Universal Century New Gundam is one of the better old High Grade Universal Century kits that can give its competition a run for their money. Considering that, the thought of it being used as a basis for a build kit wasn't all that bad. Alas, the goodwill for the root kit does not transfer over to the High Grade New Xeon Gundam. While it delivers on the accurate colors, great part separation, and the full set of gimmicks, including a properly vigorous beam, the reused parts suppress the intimidation factor you would feel from the line art and anime appearance, while the Xeonic Sword exemplifies the limited articulation that would have been passable otherwise. But the real kicker is, it's a 3100 yen kit, so it's at the top end of the scale for average high grades. You could really net a lot of other better kits for that price, or the separate sword if that's all you're looking for. Ultimately, the high-grade new Xeon Gundam has some polarizing aspects, but does the bare minimum to produce a solid model kit of the design. Personally though, it wouldn't be something I would prioritize for my collection. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching, drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys. Buh bye bye